प्लीज टेक योर सीट इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ भविष्य सो माय नेम इज भविष्य आई कम फ्रॉम कश्मीर राजस्थान आई डिड माय अंडरग्रेड एट आईआईटी कानपुर इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग एंड दिस इज माय सेकंड अटेम्प्ट एट सोशल सर्विसेज आई विल आस्क यू वन थिंग यू आर ए पास आउट फ्रॉम आईआईटी कानपुर ही इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट इंस्टिट्यूट्स द ट्विन आईआईटी द टू आईआईटी कानपुर so why you up to come for this uh, civil services what prompted you to come to civil services yes sir so actually during my stay at iit kanpur i uh, tried a different uh, uh disciplines so i did a research internship then i did a corporate internship and and during my last year i developed a strong interest in international relations and political philosophy while at the same time i uh, i thought uh, a civil service job would provide that sense of meaning and purpose that was missing in other jobs and i wanted to be a practitioner that's why i decided for civil services i'll tell you one thing yes sir there is a study they tell that they spend about 6 lakhs of rupees yes, per sir. year yes sir. for a student yes, in iit yes sir so the government is spending huge amount of money yes sir for uh, study development of iit students yes sir but after taking a seat over there yes, if sir. you come into civil service yes sir don't you think that it is a wastage of money government is spending second now what happens is you are also in a way blocking blocking will not be the right word you are stopping another meritorious student to come into iit that is the reason that was a pranam mukherjee committee pranam mukherjee committee recommended that it the, this controversy was there previously yes, now he touched the hornets nest yes, that the technocrats i mean doctors and uh, engineers yes, from it should not be allowed to come into the civil service yes, what's your take on this be little uh, precise and be little give with a little narrative if you can yes sir so first uh, i don't think it's a waste of seat because uh, i think the major advantage is when uh, people uh, from different disciplines interact and uh, and the progress happens at the margins so sir uh, and in administration and in foreign policy technology would be the mainstream so it would be really helpful if iitians and other technocrats can join the civil services so i don't think that it's a waste of seat and the aptitude that we have developed uh, will help uh, in civil oh, services what is your take on wastage of money uh, now this much of money government is spending on yes sir what is your take so uh, my training at iit has uh, not just the knowledge content but has also built the aptitude the general skills that are uh, applicable across a broad spectrum so and that would apply in administration too and and the history shows that uh, iitians uh, uh, st- uh, starting from uh, have uh, s- have been successful in all domains including including administration uh, okay anyway now yes, my next question is yes, you sir. must have heard these days a lot of uh, criticism this thing is coming bureaucracy yes sir that was called the steel frame at one point of time yes, by sardar patel what do you think yes sir from your point of view what major challenges the bureaucracy faces these days and yes, why it is still that the steel frame is crumbling down yes sir so uh, there are multitudes of change be change. specific yes sir huh. so first would be the politi- politicization of bureaucracy uh, second would be the uh the corporate politician and the bureaucrat nexus that is emerging that is leading to cronyism um so third would be uh, bad incentives in uh, inside the services which leads to a uh, lack of meritocracy uh, fourth would be so uh, so uh, with greater privatization uh, the best talent is not coming to civil services so uh, civil services losing its uh, respected status uh, progressively you go to the constitution of india yes sir constitution of india gives a lot of safeguards yes sir 
to the civil services yes. all india services yes. ias ifs so article 3 yes ha uh, no, article 3 3093 anyway my point is they give a lot of safeguards yes sir and also lot of other safeguards yes, like upsc also stands as a protection any action taken against you has to be referred to upsc yes sir but why all these things remaining yes sir previously it was not happening now why the bureaucracy is succumbing to political pressure is it for the material aspirations of the people the bureaucracy yes sir so material aspirations do have a role to play but so apart from that uh, uh uh increasingly the permanent executive uh, is reliant on the political class for its promotions its transfers etc uh, that has also led to a pliable bureaucracy further uh, there is also ideological reasons which lead to uh, greater politicization further uh, the constitutional safeguards are not as robust uh, and have weakened over the time especially after in the post emergency era so so those are some of the reasons <coughs> bureaucracy is to blame for that anyway yes sir my point is yes sir keeping this thing in view you are still want to come into the bureaucracy yes sir and with a decision okay yes sir now yeah mr bhavishya yes, what sir. does bhavishya mean sir bhavishya means future future yes when do we observe world engineers day so world engineers day so i am not sure but i think it's on 11th of may anyway 4th of march okay sorry sir. and we have started observing world engineers day only from 2020 uh, by the way when do we observe national engineers day uh so i think i confused national engineers day with uh, world engineers day Anyway, that is fifteenth of September. Why fifteenth of September? National Engineers Day. Sir, I think it's to celebrate uh, uh, Sri Vishweshwarya's uh, um, so birth anniversary. Yeah. Sir, Moksh Gundam Vishweshwarya. Why do we call him Sir? So uh, he, so he was uh, awarded the knighthood by the Royal Society. Did he get any civilian award from our government? Sir, but uh, yes, sir, he got the Bharat Ratna. Can you tell me his main contributions? So his uh, main contributions were in um, in civil engineering, especially in building dams and uh, water canals in state can of Karnataka. Can you name the first dam in which he contributed? So in Karnataka. Mm hmm. So actually, I've studied it. Anyway, uh, you are from Rajasthan. Yes, sir. What do you know about Mr. Rajendra Singh? Yes, sir. So uh, Mr. Rajendra Singh is known as the Waterman uh, of India. Uh, he helped uh, in what conservation efforts uh, using traditional uh, techniques like uh, jawhards, bawdies, etc. Did he get any prize, award, recognition for that? So, so again, sir, I'm not sure, but I think he got the Maxis Award. Maxis Award. Yes, yeah, sir. He got. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, he got Maxis Award. What else? So, so he got one of the Padma Awards, but I'm again not sure uh, which. What one. else? Stockholm Water Prize. Okay, anyway, sir. yes. Uh, you might be knowing about the Ministry of Jal Shakti. Yes, sir. Can you name some important flagship schemes of Ministry of Jal Shakti? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, Hargar Nal Se Jal. Uh, That is for pipe water. Har ghar jal. So this Har is a popular slogan given for uh, for which mission? Uh, Sir, Jal Jeevan Mission. Jal Jeevan yes. Mission. So one flagship is scheme is Jal Jeevan Mission. Yes, sir. Can you name any other flagship scheme? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, so the Namami Gange uh, that has now turned into Earth Ganga. Okay. Yes. What sir. else? So, so, so Jal Shakti Abhiyan is uh, all related to water. Jal Shakti Abhiyan. Yes, What exactly that is? You are right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So it is about uh, water conservation, uh, rainwater harvesting, water shedding. Rainwater harvesting. So what is the popular slogan given by our honourable Prime Minister related with Jal Shakti Abhiyan? As it is Har Ghar Jal in Jal Shakti Mission. Yes, sir. Here that is popular slogan. Uh, 
so it's about uh, conserving water uh, her popular bones. slogan slogan har ghar jal jaise wahan slogan hai yes sir here so, it is so her boon uh, her ghar catch the rain catch the rain. popular yes, slogan yes. given by yes, honorable yes, prime yes, minister yes. you are from ajmer yes sir. what for people go to ajmer uh, tourists go to ajmer so first would be ajmer sharif darga mm -hmm. uh, of khaza moine dilchasti yeah. mm -hmm. and second would be sir pushkar Temple. Pushkar, what for? They go to Pushkar. So there's Brahma Temple. Uh, Brahma Temple. So is it the only temple in the country or in the world? Yes, sir. Uh, related with Lord Brahma. Yes, sir. It is supposed to be the only temple. Any reason which is cited in our? Yes, sir. Say so it's in mythology. It mythology. Is, yeah. Yes, yes sir. So what is, is the reason? Yes, sir. It that is, this is the only temple of Lord Brahma. Yes, sir. All over the world. Yes, sir. So it is believed that uh, Lord Shiva cursed Lord Brahma that he would not be worshipped on earth and. Who who gave that curse? Who cursed him? Who cursed Lord Brahma related with this? Sir, so, so God is Saraswati. <laughs> Was he his own he son? Lord Saraswati. That is. Okay. Sir. So, okay. Uh, so there is a bill which has been introduced in the parliament, and that is related with Criminal Procedure Identification Amendment Bill. Any idea about that bill? Yes. Introduced sir. recently, and what exactly that is? So, uh, so the criminal um, identification bill mm -hmm. uh, will lead to greater empowerment of police. Uh, uh, police Just and please be brief. Yes, be sir. Brief. So, so, yeah. sir. One or two lines only, not more than that. So it allows them to collect bio samples. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So new method of identification. Yes, is it? Yes. Sir. Is it like that? Can yes, you say? Sir. Okay. Yes, United Na UAE. Yes, sir. Free trade agreement has been signed. Yes, sir. by India with yes, UAE sir. recently in yes, the month sir. of February, perhaps. Yes, sir. So now you tell me what are the salient features of the trade agreement, free trade agreement? Yes, sir. So it's a comprehensive economic agreement with UAE. So it would allow uh, a greater investment from the sovereign wealth funds of UAE into India, uh, and it would allow uh, Indian ma Indian services uh, market access in UAE. Uh, it would or uh, it will lead to overall growth of trade so how much trade we are having at present with uae and how much it is going to be increased in another 5 years so actually i read the numbers but i cannot remember them now but so i think it was uh, in order of tens of billions and it uh, it is 60 billion dollar at yes, present yes, and it is going to be increased by 100 billion dollars yes, by the, uh, within another 5 years Yes. Sir. Okay. Now you tell me uh, what is this blockchain technology? Computer science, your subject. Isn't yes. It? Yeah. And uh, how this digital currency? Uh, this will be issued with the backing of blockchain technology. So first of all, you tell me about the blockchain technology and what is this with the backing of yes, sir. back uh, blockchain technology? The digital rupee will be. Yes. Should. Yes. So, so firstly, uh, blockchain is the distributed, anonymized, uh, encrypted uh, uh, technology that allows uh, different nodes to interact anonymously uh, and uh, with perfect uh, security. So, uh, and digital currency is based on the blockchain technology. So, uh, for example, China has released its digital yuan, uh, which is based on the blockchain. It would be controlled by the the central bank of that particular nation, uh, and it would allow uh, uh, full digitization, uh, alternate methods of payment. Uh. Okay, my last question uh, that relates with um, Minerva Mill case. Yes. So, which were the important provisions of the constitutional amendment, forty six constitutional, forty second constitutional amendment, forty second, which were struck down? in this particular judgment minerva yes, mill case yes sir. so if i recall correctly in minerva mills case uh, the uh, judicial review was made part of the basic structure uh, the the uh, the 42 the 42nd amendment uh, led to the 42nd amendment made uh, can you recall, can yes, you say like this, that yes, two important provisions made through 42nd amendment in the constitution were stuck down by Honorable Supreme Court under this particular case, Minerva Mill case. One, 
precedence of director principles of state policy over fundamental right wow. and number two parliament can, can amend any part of the constitution yes sir is it like that can yes, you recall now yes sir so so that the first thing would be uh, in minerva mills, mills case uh, supreme court op opined that uh, there is a harmonious construction of fundamental rights and director principles so neither precede uh, uh, so fundamentals are before dpsp and they need to be understood in a harmonious way second would be that parliament has limited amending powers there is judicial review uh, yeah. and it, constitutionality needs to be thank you yes sir. Yes. Uh, yes, Hi, Marisha. So, uh, you've uh, worked on AI. Yes, ma'am. And uh, so, my question to you, to you would be what do you understand by the term artificial intelligence? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, artificial intelligence is, is an attempt to create a synthetic. Uh, uh, human intelligence in synthetic uh, substrate, so uh, in computers, in machines, uh, using algorithms. Okay. Uh, do you see the upcoming of artificial intelligence as a promise or a peril? Ma'am, it's it's a double-edged sword. Uh, it has both uh, promises and perils. So, in terms of promises, uh, it would lead to uh, it would increase the standard of living. It would lead to uh, greater innovation uh, because further innovation could be done by AI itself uh, it would lead to self-driving cars etc etc uh, but there are several perils as well uh, the increasing automation would can create an can an exaggerate the already existing unemployment crisis uh, there is risk of automated weapon systems and finally there's a risk of an artificial general intelligence could that could be antagonistic to human civilization itself I see that you know you've mentioned in your hobby that you like keeping a watch on the market. Uh, ma'am, it's not market exactly, but what I mean by market is marketplace of ideas. So it's not related to stock market or share market. Okay. Yes. So you say forecasting or prediction, predicting prediction markets. Yes, ma'am. So what do you mean by this? Uh, ma'am, uh, I try to uh, assign probability to future events so for example who will win the presidential race in usa or when will the russia ukraine war will occur or uh, wh whether the iran nuclear deal will be signed or not okay okay and uh, having said that do you think that uh, the time is ripe enough in india to have an ai act and what is the current uh, regulation policy or law concerning the artificial intelligence in india ma'am uh, as uh, ma'am uh, according to my understanding, uh, Niti Aayog has released the AI strategy, national AI document. Uh, apart from that, uh, there is no uh, regulation specific to AI, but there is general IT regulation and there is an attempt to pass the data protection law. Uh, so in that regard, uh, India is lacking uh, for, for a specific particular law related to AI. Uh, Do you think we need an AI act in India? Ma'am, definitely we should start the consultation and discussion process uh, to regulate the the technology uh, so that in time uh, we can enact a proper law because it would be a complex thing to do. So. Okay. Uh, what is the current law with respect to cryptocurrency in India? Yes, ma'am. Uh, recently, uh, the finance minister announced the cryptocurrency bill that is uh, to tax the cryptocurrencies. Uh, while at the same time uh, legitima legitimize and allow uh, crypto transactions in India. Do you think this is the right move? Yes, ma'am. I think uh, it would foster innovation uh, in the crypto, the boom in crypto sector, while at the same time it would uh, tax uh, the crypto transaction and it would, uh, it would, so it would also cut down on uh, the illegal use of cryptos in, let's say, black market or uh, you are from science background. Are you aware about the uh, Nobel Prize given last year in physics uh, or in any field of science uh, last year? Uh, ma'am, in ma'am, actually, I mean, I read the news, but I'm not able to recall any. I names. don't. I won't. I don't want the name of the person. Yes, I, I'm looking for an answer from you with respect to the cause for which this award was given. And how would that cause affect or impact the society at large? Uh, okay. uh, so, uh, ma'am, in case of physics, I think it was related to. Uh, ma'am, uh, I'm not sure if 
I am remembering Roger Penrose who won the uh, Physics Nobel. I am not sure if it was the if it was last year or uh, year before. Uh, he won it for the his study of black holes. Uh, he was the first one to propose the black hole model uh, in terms of physics. Uh, in terms of physiology or medicine, uh, I think it was the research was about um, how oxidization happens within cells. Uh, but again, I am not sure on the details. Okay. My uh, last question to you is that uh, are you aware about something called the hydroponics te technique? Yes, ma'am. As I understand, it is the way of growing plants in uh, water without soil. Uh, how popular is it in India? Ma'am, it's popular in urban settings and limited settings, but I have not seen a uh, large scale implementation. Okay, and which crop do you think is conducible for that kind of an agriculture? Ma'am, uh, and the the designer crops or the home uh, interior crops uh, that are popular with hydroponics because they could be grown inside so, and maybe some kinds of crash crops also. Okay. Thanks. Please. What do you mean by liberalism? So, so liberalism is the ideology from uh, post is an enlightenment era ideology uh, that developed especially with John Locke that asserted uh, uh, individual rights individual's right to life, liberty and property. Uh, it restricted uh, state's coercion and over the years it has expanded into uh, further rights with freedom of speech with J.S. Mill and now uh, women empowerment, abolition of slavery and now even a welfare state. Okay. So, I have been reading news. A lot of people are saying that the current government is liberal because it is a liberalizing market. And other people are saying it is not liberal because it is encroaching upon the state yes. liberty. Yes. What do you think? Our current government is liberal or illiberal? Uh, so, li liberal, li uh, liberalism could be measured across economic or societal dimensions. Uh, I, I would say in economic terms, uh, the government is liberal because it has tried to bring more free market reforms. Uh, in terms of society, uh, it's still uh, it's, it's debatable because the, uh, some reforms like uniform civil code are liberal in nature while others could be argued uh, to be more conservative or non-liberal or even anti-liberal. So, uniform civil code is liberal or illiberal? So, I would uh, think that it's liberal because it protects the individual from society or religion. Have you heard about that cousin marriages are allowed in South India and cousin marriages are not allowed in North India? So, if we have a uniform civil code, yes. which one would you be following across? Uh, till now, there is no consensus on what would be the uniform civil code. But uh, I believe, uh, as law commission and others have said, uh, uh, it would the the uniform civil code would not be exactly uniform, but it would respect diversity and it would try to protect individual rights. What do you think John Locke would have said about the hijab controversy? So, uh, so Locke would say, would have said that uh, it is within individual's right to uh, either wear a hijab or, but at the same time, it's within uh, uh, an institution's right, like a school or a religious place, to enforce its uh, code of conduct, the dress code, etc. Okay. Do you think the difference between a Libyan government and an authoritarian but electorally uh, selected government yes, is only a matter of semantics. Uh, I, I don't think so, sir, because uh, a Leviathan, uh, as in Hobbes and Leviathan, uh, is a totalitarian government. Uh, it has uh, absolute authority. While uh, uh, a democratic government could be changed through elections, so it's, it's still not perfect. Uh, there has to be co uh, fundamental rights, but still, a democratic government is more legitimate and than a pure Leviathan. So there are no fundamental rights in a Libya? Yes. I mean, there is a right to life, a right to resist, but I mean, so, so Hobbes said under a Leviathan you have a right to resist, but uh, there is no fundamental rights as such. Oh. So you have also shown interest in forecasting your prediction markets. Yes, sir. What is a regression analysis? Uh, so, regression analysis is a statistical technique uh, where you take uh, a sample of data and you try to fix uh, uh, a predictive curve or a predictive equation along it and, the, uh, and try to predict future outcome made on that based on past and What is p-value? Uh, so, p-value is, uh, is a uh, statistical measure to 
check if your hypothesis uh, is actually uh, if your hy hypothesis is denied. So if p value is less than 0 0.05, it says uh, uh, that your uh, null hypothesis is wrong, and you have you can take a decision. Okay. My final question. Yes, sir. Do you think there have to be a proliferation of IITs and a dilution of the brand IIT? So, uh, so there are conflicting interests on this. So, first, uh, we definitely need more IITs to uh, meet the demands of uh, uh, of all the students and uh, ensure social justice, for example. While at the same time, we need to maintain uh, the standards and the uh, the brand of IITs. So, I think the till now, what the strategy has been to ensure that the top five or top seven IITs uh, maintain their uh, higher standards. While at the same time, uh, it has uh, more IITs are opening across India to meet the uh, the need for quality education. Banaras Hindu University Technical College was even a good college before it got an IIT tap. Yes. What exactly an IIT tap brings to an institution? So uh, after becoming an IIT, there's a uh, this greater standardization. The institutional network of IITs is very strong. So, for example, uh, there is uh, inter IIT freedom of uh, movement of pr lecturers, professors, etc. And there's institutional uh, knowledge uh, in IITs, which could help an institution to, uh, become more strong. There's an alumni network. Suppose you are recruited into the civil service and become an IAS officer. Yes, sir. You are posted as SDM, yes, sir. subdivision magistrate, in a tribal district. People are very poor and this. Yes. What will be your priority of the work? What so, work you will take on priority basis? Yes. So first would be ensuring that the already existing schemes and laws for tribes are properly uh, implemented, like Forest Rights Act and others. Uh, second would be to uh, ensure that uh, tribals have uh, their basic jal jungle jameen, so they are, their, their livelihoods are ensured. Uh, third, the problem of uh, malnutrition, uh, backwardness of women, uh, alcoholism, gambling, etc., are much more uh, uh, at a much more uh, adverse in tribal populations. So that needs to be corrected. Third, uh, uh, we can connect the tribals to uh, other markets or online platforms like that, like TriFeed does that. So. Uh, to ensure a higher income to tribal population and things like ecotourism uh, could be implemented to, uh, to <coughs> maintain a balance between economics and a sustainable living. It's a different aspect. All these things combined into one. Tell one what? Um, so, that is precisely what uh, Vijit Banerjee told the novel narrative. One what which ails the tribals. Uh, which ails the tribals? Um, poverty. Yes. Yes. Poverty in different forms. Yes. In different manifestations. Yes.